Hey everyone, so today we'll be doing a tutorial for React and Tauri again, so this is a part two. And the goal of the project at the end is for you to get a UI like this. And from here on, you can, you can go and do your front-end stuff. The next video will be about integrating with Rust, okay? Because that is a bit more complicated than web development. That's just my opinion. So this is what we're uh, trying to aim for. And by the end of this video, and uh, I'm not going to start from scratch because I don't want to. And what I've done is I've made this window always open, sorry, always on top so that you can see what's going on or what relates to what. And uh, it's also responsive in design. So <laughs> up to an extent, there's no minimum width. So of course, it's really nice. And I got this to work. There's no bug here. I'll show you all this good stuff. So let's get started. I use the Mantine library. So you can go on this website and uh, copy this. So you can just type it and do yarn add. Make sure the app is not running when you do it. And you wanna add the React router DOM at six. So make sure it's version six over there. And uh, you want one more thing, which is called the Radix icons, as well as the API. I'm pretty sure we did this last time. And lastly, what you want to do, so to make your life easier, I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the last video, but you want to add this script called dev and do Tauri dev. This will be easier because then you just have to do yarn dev instead of yarn Tauri dev every single time you start developing again. After you've done that, we can uh, start programming. Now, you'll have a lot of default stuff in the app, which you can remove. And as you can see, I was trying to experiment with the settings, so you can delete that actually. So let's start with some stuff. You copy these components because our goal is this stuff. This is the navig. This is called a dashboard, but they call it an app shell. I call it a nav bar or stuff, but yeah, you can't look at this. It doesn't show up. I don't know how I found it, but I did. So this is what we're going for. As you can see, there's a bit of issues with this. You can't click these things. It's static and they don't give us your source code for it. I actually found the source code for this, but it's useless because of it doesn't actually, it's not practical in nature. So you want to import the Mantine provider. You want to import the icons for the toggle theme. You want to import state. If you're new to React, this is what triggers renders basically. It might, I might not be speaking correctly, but React is too complicated. Like the insides of it, it's not for me to understand. You know, I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not putting in the effort to read through their code base for how it works, but that's basically how I think it works, which is uh, good enough <laughs> for me because I barely use React. And uh, create styles and use Mantine theme. So this is so that you can use your own styles. You can use your own theme uh, sorry, classes and styling while using their variables. And use Mantine theme basically just returns the Mantine theme being used because there's two of them. There's dark or, oh wait, I'm not entirely sure. Lastly, you want to import the memory router, navlink, and route and routes. So this will take care of the, you can see which one's active because of that. So it triggers that, which is really nice. Next, you want to create a home. So at least one of these components, that'll be the inside of the app. So I've created a home and uh, it's just simple for now, but this will be really complicated in the future. Next, we have the settings. So yeah, you can ignore that. And here I was experimenting with Rust. This is not simple to load settings. So in the next video, we'll talk about integrating Rust. But for now, we'll just build a UI. And because we're going at my pace, you know. And uh, how I've done it is that I have a an array of objects. And uh, it's called views or routes. And each object has a path, a name. And whether to the prop value, which is exact. And component, which is, you know, the component you want to link it to. This is to prevent redundancy in the later in the code. As you can see, you don't want to be adding the, you don't, you don't want to be manually entering this information down here because if you change it, yeah, things are not going to go well. 
But anyways, we have the settings here as well. And now we have some stuff for the state. We have open and set open. So this takes care of this navigation, the mobile navigation. We have the default color scheme, which is dark. So to get dark, it, it, it's a bit complicated, which, so that's why there's a lot of code as well, even though it's not. So then we have to, we want a function called toggle color scheme. And that's basically when this is pressed, what to do. So we get the new value, which is either the value or it's the opposite of what the co current theme is, color scheme is. Then we want to set the color scheme. And actually, we want to store it in the settings first, and then we want to do the other stuff. Next, we have use styles. And it, what we can do is, let's see, nav link. What am I going for? Okay, these are custom styles, okay? So for us, for our theme to look like this, with the buttons, sorry, with the links, we have to add some custom CSS, which is display block with 100% padding, the theme, the spacing, extra small, border radius. I wanna try something. This is just so you can see the changes. So I actually like, I, I prefer this, but you know what'd be really nice to see? It, how large, okay, yeah. So you know what, I'm changing it to medium. I like medium a bit more. If you go to small, let's see what happens. Yeah, I like medium a bit more. I'm not a boxy type person. I don't really like boxes that much. So as you can see, it looks really nice. We might have to increase the margin so that we don't get this clipping. Uh, it's fine though. The color of the button depends on the scheme. So in, uh, what's it called? in in dark mode, we want to use the dark, and otherwise we want to use black, so that it works. Text decoration none. So if you comment this out, you'll see that there's underlines. That's why you want text decoration none. And hover. So on hover, you want to you want this background to show up. So that's what you've done. But I've also copied it to the nav link active, so that yeah. And now comes the hard part. So we or sorry, we first get the classes that we're using, which is use styles. And now comes the complicated part. So let me move this all the way here. I think this is a good spot. Okay. First you wanna do is use the man team provider and we wanna say theme color scheme. So we give the color scheme as the color scheme we're using. Then we want the font family here too, for some reason. And with global styles, because let's see, I just want to see what happens. So you don't actually, you actually do need that. Okay, you actually do need that. I guess if, to use custom styles, you need to do that. So yeah, do that. Then we want to add the memory router because you can't really add it anywhere before. Because the, the app shell takes a nav bar. And so we need the memory router now. Or we could move it up here, but I suggest you leave it here. It's just a bit easier. It doesn't matter, actually. You do whatever you feel like is better. But now we open the app shell. And oh yeah, one more thing. I use the memory router because this is a desktop application, so we don't really care about the history API. Now we open up the app shell, or we try creating it, and you'll see a lot of information here. I have, yeah, just keep it like this because I believe that if you don't, yeah, something like this, something like that will happen. So that's why I suggest you don't play around. You just leave it like that. It's more of a, after your app is done, then you can look into it, you know? It's one of those things. But here comes one of the first important things, which is the nav bar. This is custom. Uh, as in, I, I did this part myself. It'd be Okay, so navbar, we do this, which is basically saying uh, the desktop navbar will only be shown when, uh, let's see. Mm, not opened. 
Oh, whatever. I'm not going to explain that. But anyways, over here we have the, the views. So we have the navigation links for the views. And what I've done is I just map the views and uh, I show that we just create a nav link with align left to equals the view dot path index equals key equals index on click. We just do set open to false, meaning that in the in this case, if we don't have that, the menu will never will not it will not close. So I've added that in. And if, it, if the nav link is active, we want to add the nav link active classes to the to that nav link. OK, and inside of it, we have a group and a text and you can add icons, actually, but I haven't because it's not really a, an important feature at the moment. It's just a to do. So that's why I've left it in the group over here. But text is fine. I still suggest leaving it in a group. Next, we have the header. So the header is just up here and we have we want to add this as well. So we have a div here. A lot of this is copy paste, by the way. I'm not sure which parts I modified, but so you just want to copy it all. We have the media query. So this will only show up at a certain point. And uh, this is what uses that open thing as well as color. Use maintain theme. OK, text. R2, T2, uh, modern text to filing, the action icon. So this is what this is. And size 30, all right. Styles, theme. So this is the app shell styling. Takes a theme and uh, just returns some stuff, which is main background color. So I guess we could do is no, I'm not sure actually. Ah, whatever. It's not important at the moment because there's a lot of redundancy in their examples. Like, why are my setting styles here, here, everywhere, but not like and using this, right? So those are things that I suggest cleaning up at the end. I'm not going to be cleaning it up right now. It's just a waste of time. It's not my fault that the tutorials, the examples are bad, you know? And it's not my responsibility to fix it right now. So next we have routes. So this is what how you show the content inside. So we map the view and index. We have route key. We set exact if view dot exact path view dot path element, and then which is this component. We end the routes and the memory shell, and the memory writer, maintain provider, etc. So I hope this was a bit useful in. Uh, I know I rushed it, so if, if you missed something, just pause the video and copy the code. You can always comment down below if, you know, I missed something or something went wrong for you. And remember, if you want to develop, so I only have the always on top because I'm recording a video, but usually I put it on my second monitor. So you can even do this. So you can have a true, but remember to turn it to false when you're not when you're trying to build the application because it's really useful when developing. All right, so that concludes the video. And for next time, I will be, yeah, for next time, I'll be doing some data. So we'll, how do we fetch data and like store data on the computer?